Hey, this is Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. I'm just making a short tutorial which is going to show you the video settings I use and also the video method I use to record the videos that you see on my YouTube channel. The reason I'm doing this is because um, a few users have actually asked me, you know, what settings do you use and how do you go about recording them. Um, so this video will show you exactly how I do this because uh, what I try to explain it's quite a few steps involved and it becomes complicated so hopefully this video will clear up anything that you didn't understand or just to anyone that was a, likes the quality of my videos and wanted to try to replicate them so this will also benefit you as well now the first thing you're going to need is the latest and most up-to-date version of MSI Afterburner um, the version I'm using right now is um, MSI Afterburner 3.0 um, and that's the most up-to-date version as of the 2nd of June 2014. First thing you're going to want to do is click settings and find the video capture tab. The first option you come to is your hotkey function. Now this will be um, the combination of keys you select when you want to start your recording and the combination of keys you're going to use to stop your recording. So you one, one press to start your recording and do that again and it stops recording. So this will be entirely up to you. I like to use control and L because I find in games it doesn't really it's never usually binded as a game function. Maybe if I'm playing a shooter, I might crouch as soon as I start recording, but that's about it. So try to use keys that won't um, that are not very popular in games. So you don't do anything strange like open a menu or a quick save when you just start your recording. The second option is video pre-record. Now I don't actually use this feature and I don't actually have any knowledge of how it benefits you so I'm going to skip that for now as I said this is a video on the settings I use um, not necessarily saying they're the best settings but um, these are the ones I use and um, I'm just going to try and share that with you now we come to the second heading which is video capture properties and the first option you come to is video format I choose VFW compression and I also use that in combination with the Lagerif lossless codec. Now the Lagerif lossless codec doesn't actually come bundled with MSI Afterburner. You actually need to download that independently. Um, I'll put the link in the description. Um, you're going to need that. So you get that downloaded, install it to your system. And once you've done that, you click the browse icon and under a heading called compressor, you click a dot down key and you find the Lagerif lossless codec which you've just installed. Once that's selected, click configure, check the use multi threading um, box because you want to take advantage of all the cores um, of your processor to help with the performance hit which um, will happen when you start recording your videos. So the more threads you have probably the least of my performance that you're going to see. Um, the second thing you, you're going to want to select is an option under mode which is uh, your color settings. Um, you get RGBA, RGB, YU, Y2 and YV12. I found that RGB is the most accurate. Red, green, blue is the most accurate color you can get but also it, it makes your recordings file size and really 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 huge so I found that y YV12 is a very very accurate color setting but also um, uses you know not as much space so if you're worried about your recording file size like me um, I'd recommend selecting YV12 now that's all you're going to need to do when it comes to configuring your Lagerif lossless codec. Click OK. 
and click OK once more. Um, now you want to deal with your container format, which you just choose audio, video, interleave, AVI. That's what I use. I think you can do some other custom settings, for example, with um, MKV. But um, I use audio, video, interleave, AVI, and it's always worked pretty well for me. So I'd go ahead and select that. Now there is a slider which determines your video quality. You don't need to worry about this because we're using the Lagerref lossless codec and we've just already set that up. So even though the slider has a percentage, um, quality percentage beside it, you don't need to worry about that because the slider is not inactive, it's actually greyed out because um, these settings are actually nullified due to using the lagger if lossless codec so we'll go ahead and skip that and we'll come to frame size a frame size is a pretty important one as well because it will determines the resolution um, of the source you're capturing I always choose full frame because it will always record at the resolution of your source so right now I'm capturing my desktop and my desktop resolution is 1920 by 1200 so that's the resolution it will record at. Had my resolution been at uh, 1920 by 1080 that would be the resolution it will record at. You don't need to worry about it it automatically detects um, the source resolution and records accordingly so always choose full frame unless of course you actually want your videos always to be in 720p 720p or uh, some other specific uh, resolution. Frame rates also another important one. Um, generally everyone records at 30 FPS reason being is because um, YouTube will downgrade your video um, frame rate from anything higher than 30 FPS because um, so recording at over um, 30 FPS is pretty pointless. Um, there are times when it becomes useful however for example if you wanted to create a slowdown um, function it's always good to record at 60, F 60 fps or above um, this is popular with people who do uh, battlefield like uh, kill streak videos um, so you want to be recording at a high frame rate so you can slow it down to show your slow motion kills now, this is the only time I'd um, this function would I'd recommend choosing over 30 FPS. Um, obviously, you would use your editing software of choice, be it whether it will be, uh, you know, Vegas, Sony Vegas, or um, whatever you, whatever you use. I personally use um, Cyberlink uh, Movie Producer, and obviously, you would uh, do all your editing, rendering your slow mo, and render it to 30 FPS. So when you're uploaded even when YouTube gets done with it um, all of those slow motion um, actions are already being edited in, edited in so you don't need to worry um, frame limits also an important one as well because when you record your gameplay you don't want it to be capped by the software that you're recording with so um, always leave that disabled because if I was to ex for example set it to 30 FPS the moment I start recording, um, doesn't matter if I'm running with the GTX 780 in SLI or you know GTX um, 780 Ti's in SLI. Um, whatever the FPS you choose, um, it's going to limit it to um, that. That's the performance your your graphics card is going to be limited to. So always leave that unchecked as disabled. Um, video folder is where the destination of your recording will go. Um, a quick tip for you guys would be to always record to a different hard drive than the source you're capturing. What I'm basically saying is um, I have a solid state drive which I have my OS installed to and um, some benchmarks and that's pretty much it. All my games are um, installed to separate hard drives so when I do start my recordings um, for an example my Battlefield 4 would be running off hard drive C I mean hard drive D and my recordings will be going to hard drive C 
So it creates the least amount of uh, performance here as possible. It's also always good to have a very, very fast um, write speed, which is why I always record to my solid state drive, which also helps with uh, the performance here. And last but not least is multi threaded optimization. And this determines how many um, threads you're going to use or how many cores you're going to use when you're recording. Um, this is entirely down to the processor you have. If you have a quad core like me, I'm running an Intel 3570K at 4.8 gigahertz. This has four cores, so I choose four threads. Had I had more cores, for example, like a AMD 8350, um, which has eight threads or eight cores, I would be choosing eight compression threads. The same goes for 4770K that has four cores and um, it, because of its hyper threading function it has eight threads so you would also choose eight threads and this will obviously um, help with um, your performance in recordings so always choose the amount of um, threads you have available due to your processor and um, that's all you need to know really so that's it when it comes to the settings um, your videos will be rendered in quite a big size. Um, tip my typical 15 minute videos generally come out at like 28 gigabytes. Um, I then edit it the videos with my um, editing software of choice. Um, I'll show you. I generally use an MP4 format, and um, I can show you the bitrate settings. And after that, it's pretty much down to you what you want to do with it. So uh, hopefully that's helped. Come on, Wrecker. Let's see what we got. Ready up. Fuck is this cocktail gun? Get us to the hotel. I don't see it. The FBs are on the top floor, so Sky Bar, Sky Bridge, that sounds about right. Sky Bar was on the fucking roof. You really need to call for this one. I don't know. It's just. Close the fucking door! Hey, what?